What's up, folks? Oh, I'm so excited for this. Um, I have been wanting to play this for a while. Um, this is, of course, Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. Uh, the classic Game Boy Advance title. Um, this was the Yu-Gi-Oh! game that I played. And there are some other Yu-Gi-Oh! games that didn't really, like... Uh, what's the word? Didn't really simulate the card game that much. Um, and we're going to be starting a new game, of course. But this game really did simulate the card game, like, how it was played in real life. And also, it has to do with the Battle City arc of the anime, which I love. Um, those first two arcs are really all I watch. I only love classic Yu-Gi-Oh. But we're going to start a new game. Oh, absolutely, I want to start a new game, because that was just me testing it earlier. Great. All right, so here we are, folks. <laughs> you might get it. Awesome, Brody. Also, hello, Brody. Welcome to Battle City, Duelists. This city is here for dueling and provides duelists with the opportunity to test their skills. Battle City is divided into areas, and it's up to each duelist to move through each area and find an opponent. We will be providing you with a deck containing a set of 40 cards. Check them out. Now make your selection. Okay. So, again, just let me know if the music is too loud. Um, I have to run this on a different emulator than I did uh, the other games we've played so far. Um, so just let me know if it's too loud. So, I have a pretty good knowledge of this game. It's good? Awesome, Brody. Thank you. Pretty good knowledge of this game. Pretty good knowledge of, like, the classic era of Yu-Gi-Oh. However, my knowledge is a little bit less encyclopedic than, you know, the classic Pokemon games. But I feel great about it. So, we have three uh, different choices for starter decks. Um, kind of similar to a starter choice in Pokemon. Huh, how about that? So, we have a monster-based deck, which is here on the left. We have a trap card base deck in the middle, and we have a magic card base deck on the right. And if you've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, um, if you've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before when it was first created, <laughs> then I'll enlighten you. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of different mechanics that go into it now. There are tons and tons and tons that I have no idea about, because Yu-Gi-Oh! is still an ongoing card game. Um, can you still take children's lunch money for bad gambling habits? I mean, pretty much. Um, but, so here, what I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with a trap card deck. Um, because trap cards can be very, very powerful. And it'll be nice to have some of the better ones at the beginning of our playthrough here. Um, so that's what I'm going to roll with. Okay. You are now a participating member of the Battle City Tournament. We will constantly monitor your current location by means of electro waves. Likewise, all participants are being monitored. Hence, the location of all participants are displayed on our locator map. The name of each participant will be listed when you challenge a specific opponent. You'll find this to be a useful feature in your search for opponents. I should also mention that the electro waves can only detect duelists in adjoining blocks. And that's about all you need to know. So let's get on with the tournament and may the best duelist win. Okay, so there are some mechanics in this game that I literally have never learned and I probably won't. <laughs> but here, um, this one, it just says passenger. Um, basically, when you challenge an opponent or you talk to somebody, a passenger, one day of the week <laughs> will go by. You can see in the top right up there, it says Sunday. Um, but now, as you can see, there's just kind of like that green static. So we don't know who that duelist is. So here at the beginning of the game, when you see the green static, that means you're just going to challenge a random duelist. And I'm going to start with this one. Now, some of these are going to be really tough at the start, because some of the characters have really good decks, and our starter decks just aren't very good. Um. Oh! Ishizu Ishtar. My family has sworn to protect the Millennium Items. I must not lose if I am to change our 3,000 year destiny. So this is very interesting. Um, I usually always just pick rock. Okay. 
So, I will explain. Ishizu. Ooh. She's got some nice spooky music. So, Ishizu's family protects the Millennium Items, which are these kind of like sacred items from ancient Egypt, and there's a lot of shadow magic going on. Um, there's not a lot you need to know about the story. This game kind of functions more as like just a Yu-Gi-Oh simulator, but there is a cool little story that goes with it. Um, so we pro it probably won't take too many episodes to, to get through this game. Um, but I have, sorry, excuse me, I have other games that we're going to be rolling out here soon. So, first we got a draw. And now, these are trap cards. You can set as many of these as you want, these uh, pink ones. Spellbinding Circle and Trap Hole are both very good. So I'm going to go ahead and set both of those. Um, and I am going to go ahead and just set my Giant Rat in Defense Mode. And what this does is when it's destroyed, it lets you get an uh, Earth Monster with an attack of 1,500 or less from your deck and special summon it to the field. So it really helps you get more monsters out onto the field, and that's something that we'll explain more as we go. And we're going to end my turn. Giant Rat. Okay. So this is a really good monster. It's called Dunamis Dark Witch. Um, it is a four-star monster. Any monster above four, so five or above, requires tributes to summon. Um, so if you can get a powerful four-star monster that doesn't require any tributes to summon, that's really good. And 1,800 attack is really good for a four-star monster. Unfortunately for our Dunamis Dark Witch here, we have this Trap Hole card. And if they played a card, if they played a monster face up with an attack over a thousand, we can destroy it with our Trap Hole. Oh wow. She's got a lot of traps herself. But as you can see, we have like the giant rat. It has 1,400. We have a Celtic Guardian here, 1,400. That's like some passable attack for a 1,400 monster. Um, but really, we want to get some stronger monsters going. Ah, giant true nade is very good because we can return all magic and trap cards on the field to the respective owner's hands. Now, this won't destroy her traps that she set, but... It does clear the field for both of our monsters to attack her life points directly, which we love to see. Absolutely adore to see. And each duelist starts with 8,000 life points, as you can see right now. And attacking directly is a great way to bring those down really quick. As you can see, she's already down to 5,200. Um... <laughs> Sacrifice the kid. Already took his lunch money. No use now. <laughs> I get you. Um, okay. So now we can enter main phase two. And that lets us reset our trap. Now she's going to set her traps again. But we were able to get all that good damage off. So that's great. Um, okay. So something I will do. I'm going to set you in defense mode. Now, attack in defense mode is interesting. <clears throat> if a monster is in defense mode, you cannot lose life points when it's destroyed. But if it's in attack mode, you can. So that's what makes it more defensive. Okay. Okay, Mirror Force. That's probably one of the best traps in the game. It destroys any attack position monsters on your side of the field when you attack. Um, so that's bad for our Celtic Guardian. I was anticipating maybe a trap card happening there. Um, let's see. So now we're probably just going to call it here for our turn. Ah, Marie the Fallen one is a very interesting card. Um, I'll let that go for now. Let's see. I could activate Spellbinding Circle. That will make it not attack, but I think it's okay to lose our Giant Rat because... Um, we get to special summon a monster to the field. And in this deck, we have this card, the Giant Soldier of Stone, which is very good because it's only a three-star monster, but it has 2,000 defense, which is very nice. 
Oh, this is... Th there's a lot to this game. It's very interesting. Um, so right now... Um, I'm good. Okay. Excuse me. So, Dark Magician is kind of one of the kind of trademark cards. Um, since it's a seven star monster, it requires two tributes. Uh, five star and six star only require one, but seven and eight, I think seven and above require two. Um, and he's got 2,500 tech, which is pretty good. Let's see. But we're not going to summon him now because we can't. We're just going to use, put our giant soldier of stone in defense mode. And as you can see, Marie the Fallen One doesn't have enough attack to break through. But when we destroy Marie the Fallen One, it will gain, uh, Ishizu will gain more life points. So we don't want that. <laughs> the Black Rectangle in defense mode. <laughs> okay. So now let's see what we want to do. Um, I'm just going to call it for now. Okay, seeing that she can't destroy my giant soldier, she's just gonna, gonna let it go. Now, having two Dark Magicians right now isn't amazing. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna play this card. It lets you draw three cards from your deck, but you have to discard two. It kinda lets you uh, work through your deck a little bit. So I'm gonna do this. And this is another reason why I, why I feel okay discarding one of my Dark Magicians is that card right there, Monster Reborn. Um, and I'll discard Burfumet as well. It's kind of situational. I, it probably won't last too terribly long in our deck, to be quite honest. Um, let's see. Mystical Space, Space Typhoon is great. It lets you destroy um, any magic or trap card on the field. So I can get rid of that one. What was it? Ah, Ceasefire. I don't even know what that does. Ah, I see. Very nice. Um, and I'll call it there right now as well. Okay. Ooh, that is a another seven-star monster, the Wing Weaver. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to make it so this Wing Weaver cannot attack us with our spellbinding circle because it has enough attack to break through our giant soldier of stone. Okay, let's see. Um, Dark Magic Ritual, that's a very interesting card. Um, okay. So there's not much we can do right now. Dark Magic Ritual, I'll get into this a little bit. This is, <laughs> I guess this is gonna be kind of like an info heavy episode. Um, so the Dark Magic Ritual, um, a ritual magic card lets you summon a ritual monster. They'll be blue. And you have to offer monsters whose star total equals eight or more from your hand or the field. So it's kind of versatile in that way. And that would let us summon the Magician of Black Chaos, which is one of my favorite monsters. Um, but um, right now, we are going to call it... Mmm. Okay, so with Marie the Fallen One in her graveyard, we don't want to take too terribly long. Um, okay, that raises her there. But this card is great when your opponent only has one face-up monster because it destroys the opponent's face-up monster with the lowest attack. And even though Wing Weaver has a ton of attack, it's still the lowest face-up monster. So we got rid of her Wing Weaver. That's really, really good. And with that, I'm going to get rid of her Luminous Spark by playing a field card of my own. As you can see, that Luminous Spark made her Wing Weaver's attack higher, but this will increase the attack and defense of all Fiend and Spellcaster type monsters, which will increase the attack of my Dark Magician. Um, let's see. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see what she has in defense mode. And I'm going to attack with my giant soldier of stone. And maybe get rid of that trap card. Okay. Ah, okay. So that lets her summon a monster face up on the field. Okay, and that will lower her defense, so that's fine. Um. Okay, I'm fine with that. 
Oopsie. <laughs> yes, we wanted in English. <laughs> Still don't want to mess around. Hi, buddy. Hi, Loctess. How you doing? Um, hi, I'm Billy's dad. Have you seen my son? We went to school, but I can't find him. He has no lunch money. Just stealing all his lunch money. Um, Karibo is a very interesting card. Um, because if you if your life points get damaged, um, it can reduce that to zero. So it's a very good like defensive monster to have in your hand. But right now, what I'm going to do is I am going to play my Monster Reborn. And we are going to bring... Uh, one thing about Monster Reborn is that you can bring one of her monsters out onto the field too, which is interesting. What kind is this a... It's a Fiend. So that might not be terrible, but I want to bring my Dark Magician. Especially with the Yami field out. Okay. So. This will let me destroy her... Forgiving Maiden. Love it. And we'll see what her other face-down monster is. Magician of Faith. Magician of Faith is a very powerful flip monster because it lets you uh, get a magic card that you have discarded, which is really good. Um, <laughs> P.S. I love you, Karibo. Karibo is so great. Um, let's see. All right, we're still, okay, so now she plays her field card once again to weaken us once again. Okay. All right, here I'm fine playing Giant Rat. And I like to attack face down monsters with my highest attack monster because you never know what the defense is gonna be. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, Mom Turdock, how's it going? Yeah, this game does move quick. I've, I've seen other games, other Yu-Gi-Oh games like this that are um, way slower going, kind of in its mechanics. Um, so we're not in terrible shape right now. Obviously, this hysteric, this hysteric fairy is going to destroy our giant soldier. But, you know, you're gonna break a few eggs playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> um, okay. So. But, even though it gets a power boost from the field card, our Dark Magician is still powerful enough to destroy it. I still don't know what her face-down card is there. That could be a magic or trap card that she has face-down. Usually, players will play a trap card face down. Alrighty. So that's that. That Marie the Fallen one kind of keeps things annoying. And one thing that you'll kind of see is we have some, like, we have a lot of seven star monsters in our deck right now. We might want to get rid of, like, one or two of those to make uh, room for another card that we can play quicker, you know? Um, because again, this is a Buster Blader, which is a sick card. Um, and it increases its attack for every Dragon type monster on your opponent's field and graveyard. But here we're just gonna attack again. Sorry, I'm speeding up a little bit. And Giant Rat. So it seems like that face down card isn't much of a threat or else she would have uh, deployed it by now. Um, let's see. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Oh, negate attack. That's a great card. It is literally exactly what it sounds like. It negates the attack. Um, so now... We should have this one in the bag. Um, Ishizu is a pretty tough opponent to beat on your first duel. I'm actually pretty excited about that. Um, love it. Yeah, baby. So then she says, your power is good. You may become one of the many that can grant my wish. All right, so now every time you win a match, you get to pick a pack, which I love. 
This card right here, the Black Luster Soldier, is one of my favorite cards. This and another card are my favorite cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and this pack usually gives you a lot of different ritual monsters. But for now, I'm going to go for one of these. Let's see. I don't know what I can get out of these, but I love the Red Eyes Black Dragon. So let's see what we can get here. Ooh! Pot of Greed. Very good card. You get just draw two cards from your deck. Really, really good. Um, really good, simple card that helps you a lot. And helps you work through your deck. So now... Trying to remember, how do I get to... There we go. Um, so this is our... Oh, here is a password. On every real-world Yu-Gi-Oh card, there is a code. And you can put in that code in this game to just get the card instantly. But we don't want to do that. We're not doing that right now. That's not... Uh, we want to try to rip them from the packs and... Uh, try to do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, but here is our deck and our trunk. So these are the cards in our trunk. The only cards that we have are um, the cards we just got from that pack. Now, this will... F you'll get tons and tons of cards as you play the game. Um, but here... Oops. How do I do this? There we go. Here's our main deck. Um... Let's see, 214267 is your IP or the code? I actually don't know. It's probably not the code. Um, but here we have some, we have our deck. So as you can see, here are some of the cards that we didn't see. Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, Silver Fang, Summon Skull, crazy good card. Uh, only one tribute for 2500 attack is really good. Um... And here's the Magician of Black Chaos. Here is our current ritual card. Um, I'll probably want to get rid of him eventually for the... Um, whatchamacallit? Black Luster Soldier. But for now, we're going to keep our deck the way it is. But we are going to add to our main deck... The Pot of Greed. Um, great. Awesome. Feel great about that. You usually don't want your deck to be too much more than the, like, minimum 40 cards. Because then it just gets harder to find other cards in your deck. Like, if you have a 60-card deck and you really need a card, it's way harder to find it. So now we still have a bunch of people we haven't fought yet. And there's a Shizu. When you fight them, their little face shows up. So let's see who else we get. Oh, I'm excited. Ah, Taya! Let's duel! I've reinforced my deck with Yugi's help. Oh, by the way, I'm Anzu Shinzaki. Oh, okay, so they give her her Japanese name. Well, that's cool. Uh, nice to meet you! In the English anime, her name is Taya Gardner. Very different. <laughs> All right, there we go. I usually always pick first if I win. So Taya is usually not... Super great. We have different music here. Ishizu's music was really, uh, really epic and kind of spooky. But this is just kind of your standard dual music. Here's Magician of Black Chaos. Um, all right. So, again, we're going to set this trap pole. We're going to play our Pot of Greed. Great card. Ooh, we have the Dark Magic Ritual, so we can get him out if, uh, if we play our cards right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to play the Mystical Elf in Defense Mode. Not all cards have an effect. Some of them are just like vanilla monsters, they're called. Like this one, a delicate elf that lacks offense but has a terrific defense backed by mystical power. So you want to play Mystical Elf in Defense Mode. Um, when a card doesn't have an effect, it just gets a cute little blurb like that, which is lovely. All right. So a nice 2,000 defense and a trap card, that's a good first turn. Because this Maiden of Moonlight, goodbye. See you later. Mm. Okay. I don't want to get too greedy because I do know that she has that uh, trap card probably there. 
So I'm just going to play a weaker monster rather than try to go all out and play my Magician of Black Chaos. Okay. Testing the waters. Nothing too crazy. Um, what do we have here? Okay. Okay. So this will destroy Beaver Warrior, which is sad, but that's okay. Again, there are some cards that you can really, like afford to sacrifice. Now, we have our Mystical Elf there. Okay, well, I'm just gonna do it because I'm impatient. And this is cool, I usually don't get to show this off this early. We play our Dark Magic Ritual. Oh no! The Magic Jammer! Oh no! Magic Jammer is a really good trap card. Um, when you play a magic card, they can activate Magic Jammer, and that will negate your magic card. So now, we can't summon Magician of Black Chaos. How sad. Um, but that's okay. We can still play our Giant Soldier in defense mode, and we're still looking good. Ah, and here you go. When a monster with lower attack then your defense attacks a defense monster. It will do the difference in damage to their life points. So that fairy had 1,700 attack and we had 2,000 defense. So when it attacked our defense monster, it did 300 points of damage to them. All right. Doodly doodly doo. Now we still don't have anything we can do offensively to that, uh, to that fairy. But that's okay. We have a nice wall of defense right now. Oh, Spirit of the Breeze is an interesting, interesting card. I'm actually going to activate this Spellbinding Circle because as you can see, Spirit of the Breeze has zero attack and Spellbinding Circle will make it so that it cannot change, uh, change positions. So that'll basically be a free hit for us, a free direct, uh, life point hit for us. All right. Oh, guys, you're about to see one of my favorite tricks in Yu-Gi-Oh. All right. So we have this Burfo met here. Um, when you summon it, it can bring Gazelle, King of Mythical Beasts, into our hand, which is nice. Um, and when you play this card, Change of Heart, very, very strong card, you can control an opponent's monster for one turn. But what I love to do with Change of Heart is activate it. We'll bring this Dancing Fairy over here, and then I just tribute her monster instead of mine. So that way it gets rid of the monster permanently. And there we go. Love to see it. It w I think this was the next card I was gonna draw. That is insane. All right. So now we can destroy this Spirit of the Breeze and do 1,400 points of damage in the process. There we go. Boom. And one good thing about Burfomet, it's not very strong for a tribute monster, um, but um, it does let you bring uh, Gazelle into your hand and those two monsters can be fused to make a fusion monster. Let's see here. <laughs> so this is interesting. Monster Reborn also works on her graveyard. Um, but let's see, what do we have in our graveyard? Nothing strong enough that we want to bring back out. So we're just going to end our turn right Oh boy. Fusion Sage lets you bring Palmerization into your hand. And Palmerization is the um, card that lets you fuse monsters together. Um, let's see. So, Marie the Fallen only has 1,200, so our giant soldier can destroy it in defense mode. And Gazelle can actually destroy... Burfomet, so we are gonna do that. Alright. 
And again, we do need to be careful. We don't want to dilly-dally with Marie the Fallen One, Fallen One in her graveyard because it can um, give her life points back. There we go. Uh, oh, Brody, great question. So how's it going to go? Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! so on? Um, probably something like that. I don't know exactly my plan ex I don't know exactly how it's going to go. Um, I have, like, an idea of a schedule that we might do Yu-Gi-Oh! on Mondays and then um, the next game we play on Wednesdays and Saturdays because that's kind of my light streaming schedule that can vary, but those are usually the days I try to go live. Um, but uh, it'll be something like that. It might alternate every other day, kind of like you're saying. Um, we'll just see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how... Uh, the people respond to this, and I think one Yu-Gi-Oh, two Pokemon, or one Yu-Gi-Oh, two, uh, you know, we're gonna negate this attack, uh, will be a good groove for us, um, especially because I feel like it might take a little bit less time to get through this game. Um, boo -doo 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 -doo. Um, so here's something interesting. I am going to summon our Silver Fang here. Something that you can do is if your attack matches the attack of the monster you are attacking, they're both destroyed. And that's not, like, an amazing thing to do, but it's something that can be useful. Ah, she has a giant soldier of her own. Okay, so we're not going to get rid of that so easily. Oh, Dark Hole. Very powerful magic card. Just destroys all monsters on the field. Um, which we don't want to use right now because we have three monsters out. But let's say the rolls were reversed. It might be worth using a Dark Hole. Well, okay. Not great, guys. She's turning the tides on us a little bit. Okay. Ah, Guy of the Fierce Knight would be great to have. Let's see. Because she has Marie the Fallen One, of course. Um, I might bring Marie out. Yes. I'm gonna use my Monster Reborn to bring her, Marie the Fallen One, out on my side. And I'm going to use it to destroy her beautiful head huntress, which is super good. There we go. Let's see. And then you can just end your turn. And sometimes, cause like, Taya, I would consider not as good of an opponent as Ishizu, but um, sometimes you just don't get as good of a draw. Okay, so Imperial Order. I forget what this does. As long as this card remains face up on the field, negate the effects of all magic cards. Pay 700 life points during each of your standby phases. Okay, so we have to pay 700 life points per turn to make this work. Um... I'm just going to set it down on the field. We're probably not going to activate it, at least not right away. So we can't hit through her soldier, but let's see what she's got face down. Baby dragon. Easy. That's pretty weak. All right. Oop. No, I'm our turn. Mm -hmm. um, okay, seven tools of the bandit. Um, that's not a card we can use right now because it negates the effects of an opponent's trap card. Let's see. So now... Alright, we're going to use our Fissure to get rid of her giant soldier. Perfect. Now I'm banking that we can destroy this monster with Marie the Fallen One. Ooh. Ah. So what this card does is she can remove some of her cards from play 
to do a little bit of damage to our life points. Now, removing from play is definitely different than... Um, there we go, just complete our turn. Removing from play is definitely different than sending them to the graveyard, just because um, if you remove them from play, they are gone. You can't use Monster Reborn, you can't do anything like that. Alright. And if you have, like, trap cards that could possibly be played, it always is asking you, like, do you want to activate these cards? Even when it doesn't really make sense to. So we don't have too many plays here. Um, we'll just use her Marie the Fallen, Fallen One to destroy her Witch of the Black Forest. Now this card can be powerful because it can let them get a card from their deck, much like our Burfomet. There we go. Um, but one card that you can get... Oh boy. Uh, let's see. Okay, great. One card that you can get via Witch of the Black Forest is the Summon Skull, which is really strong. Um, this Yami is funny enough, will actually power up her Marie the Fallen, Fallen One. So we can use that to our advantage. There we go. Perfect. We'll just complete our turn. All right, we're close. We'll see if she has any plays. She got a face down. All right, let's see. So now we have the Dark Magician. And again, we're kind of in an annoying spot because we can't play Gaia the Fierce Knight because it's two tributes. We can't play Dark Magician. We can't play Magician of Black Chaos. Um, I was really excited to show that to you guys how a ritual card works, but it is what it is. All right, so this is the same card that will damage our life points directly, which again, not a huge deal. It does 800 points of damage when she does that. All right. Now, I would love to get another card that we can actually use. <laughs> And that is the issue. I'm pretty sure I want to take out, oh boy, Morphing Jar number two. Morphing Jars have really crazy effects. I forget what this does. So it shuffles that back into her deck. Okay. Let's see. No, I don't. So that just got rid of our Palmerization and our Dark Magician Girl. So what that did was it, we drew cards and discarded anything we couldn't immediately play as a monster. Um, no. So this is silly because we have nothing that we can play. So she's going to get to attack us directly here if she wants. Mmm. She has nothing also. <laughs> okay. I'm going to play this old penguin soldier face up. Um... This monster is actually good to play face down because when it gets flipped up via an attack, um, you can send two of your opponent's monsters back to their hand, um, which is actually really nice. And it's not very strong. I just really wanted to attack her life points directly. And as you can see, she doesn't really have any plays left. And this is going to rock because I'm going to play Karibo face up. And we have these two super weak monsters that are going to take her out directly. We got 750, and then Karibo for the win. <laughs> love it. Oh, you love the penguin? Everybody loves the penguin. The penguin soldier's awesome. All right, so Taya is defeated. I told you to handle me with care. I'm like, eh, that's kind of sexist. Um, if that's the way you want to play, I'm going to learn some combos to teach you a lesson when we meet again. I mean sexist from, like, the people who wrote her dialogue. Um, let's see. Um, someone tell me what... Actually, I'm just going to do kind of a little bit of a pack roulette here. I'm going to close my eyes. 
All right, the launcher spider. Let's see what we get. Okay, okay. Um, oh, this is great, actually. A four-star 1800 attack. Seven colored fish. This is really good. We're definitely going to bring in seven colored fish. Monstrous bird, I actually don't hate. Um, because it's 2,000 for only one tribute. Um, I'm sure that'll kind of get phased out of our deck pretty quick. Um, ooh, we also got Prevent Rat. That's really good. Ah, and this is a great thing. Every week, you get this issue of uh, Duelist Weekly, and there's f five free cards in here. Um, the card that we saw earlier, that uh, Junamis Dark Witch, you can get in one of these, and that would be really good to get. We didn't get any of those this time, unfortunately. Unfortunately. All right, so now I'm gonna go into our deck and our trunk. Um, let's go to our main deck, Gaia the Fierce Knight. There is a fusion that I love with Gaia the Fierce Knight. So I'm just gonna send him to our side deck for now. And the side deck is another interesting thing. Um, let's see here. What else can we do? It's good to have some powerful monsters. I will just get rid of that one for now. Um, and then let's go ahead to our trunk here. We'll take Monstrous, Monstrous Bird to our main deck. We will get the Seven Colored Fish to our main deck as well. And we won't worry about the Prevent Rat. It works a lot like the Mystical Elf with that powerful defense. Um, if we need to, we can bring him in, but I feel pretty good. Okay. So that's great. Um, let's see. We might be able to get through one more duel tonight. Um, because we still have a ton more people to uncover. Um, all right. Let's just get on with it. Who do we have? Ah, Rex Raptor. Um, Rex Raptor's not very good. He's known for having dinosaur cards. Uh, like dinosaur or dragon monsters. Um, ooh, new track. We'll get that Spellbinding Circle going. And we'll get that Giant Rat in Defense Mode. Let's see. Ah, M Warrior number one. I'm fine with that, because he's going to take damage. Love to see it. Awesome. All right. Okay, so now we have Gazelle, the king of mythical beasts. Ah, and we have Burfomet. So if we get our Palmerization card, we will actually be able to summon our first fusion monster. Because um, really, there are just three kinds of monsters. You got your regular, or four. You got your regular vanilla monsters. Oops, no. You have your regular vanilla monsters, you have your effect monsters. The effect monsters are orange, vanilla are like yellow-ish. Um, and then you have your fusion monsters that are purple, and your ritual monsters that are blue. Mm. But, uh, all right, so here we have crawling dragon number two. Um, I am actually going to activate Spellbinding Circle so it cannot attack us. There we go. Yeah, I don't know why they're called, like, Crawling Dragon Number 2. That's just weird. Um, so here, now I have my Dark Magician Girl. Um, she's actually really interesting because she plays in tandem with the Dark Magician because her attack will increase for every Dark Magician or Magician of Black Chaos in either player's graveyard. So I think that's kind of why this deck gives you two Dark Magicians, even though it can be kind of detrimental to have two seven-star monsters like that. Um, it plays in tandem with our Dark Magician girl. So now we're just gonna complete our turn. Boo -da -ba -doo -da -ba -doo -da -ba Ah! Uh, so, Raigeki. That is the most powerful card in the game. It just destroys every monster on your side of the field. It sucks, it's too strong, 
and I think it got banned pretty quickly <laughs> in the Yu-Gi-Oh meta, but whatever. And here, now that we've taken damage, we can do z make that damage zero by discarding Karibo, which is a neat little thing. Thanks, little guy. You're really doing, putting in some work today. So now, Giant Rat is barely stronger than this, what is this monster called? D-Human. <laughs> I think it stands for Dragon Human. Yeah, a lot of these monster cards have like really weird like abbreviations or like numbers like Crawling Dragon number two. Um, and I don't know why. Uh, Swords of Revealing Light. Swords of Revealing Light is an absolute stone cold classic card. Um, I'm actually gonna put my giant rat in defense mode. It makes it so that I cannot attack him for three turns. Also, how was everyone's day today? I forgot to ask how everyone's day was. Um, oh, yeah, this armor is really weak. It's actually going to do damage to him. So now I can return you to my opponent's hand. I can do this too. That's fine. Great. Um, <laughs> I mean, a dragon person is dehuman. You're right. Um... Once we get the ability to, to attack him and his Swords of Revealing Light are through, we should be in a pretty decent position. Um, and again, because like, as you can see, his monster cards are not very strong overall. Um, like some of these, some of these guys are like true fodder, you know, um, just not good. But let's see what he's got now. Oh yeah, he's bringing back that fairy dragon. And that's gonna do some decent damage. Love to see it. And now we should be able to close this out this turn because we can just grab our friend Change of Heart here. And again, we'll take that Dark Prisoner. And I am going to just summon Burfo Men to get rid of that. Huzzah! And then, since we've already played Gazelle, we can't bring him to our hand. And now we'll just blitz him. We'll get rid of his fairy dragon. We will attack him directly with Burfomet. And then we will attack directly with Giant Soldier of Stone for the win. So guys, we're 3-0 right now. That's pretty great. We will not go undefeated, I promise you. Because once we run into Yugi, once we run into Kaiba, oh boy, they're gonna they're gonna put a hurting on us. Ow, I lost. It looks like it's back to the drawing board. I'll just have to build an even stronger dinosaur deck until we meet again. Three and zero. Thanks, Brody. We gotta keep track of my uh, of my record. Um, I'm gonna try to make a note of that. So I'm three and zero right now. So here, as you can see, this car, this uh, pack is new. I don't remember what the condition is for the Graceful Charity showing up. I think if you win a certain amount of battles in a row, or duels, excuse me, a certain amount of duels in a row, it'll show up. So we're, we'll see what's in here. Um, let's, let's see. Nothing too great. Fairy of the Fountain, not too bad, 1600 attack. What is Beast King of the Swamps? That indicates like a more rare card. You can substitute this card for any one fusion material monster. You cannot substitute for any other fusion material monsters in the current fusion. Oh, I see. So you can kind of use it instead of, if you have, like let's say we had our Burfomet but not our Gazelle, we could maybe use this Beast King to be the other summon monster. That's interesting. That's kind of, that's kind of niche. Um, but uh could come in handy um all right folks um hold on give me one second because i have a notepad over on the side here let me get this going Yu-Gi-Oh record three and oh baby okay well folks this has been absolutely delightful 
Um, I have loved playing Yu-Gi-Oh! with you tonight. Um, I We'll see how it shakes out, but right now the plan is Yu-Gi-Oh!'s will be kind of our our Monday night stream. I think, I think that could be really fun. So our next stream, we're actually going to be starting another new game, which I am over the moon about. It's going to be awesome. Um, if you followed me thus far, it probably won't be too much of a surprise, but I am so excited to get into it. I have uh, a lot of cool things planned for the playthrough of our next game that we'll play uh, alongside this here Yu-Gi-Oh game. But thanks so much for stopping in. Really, really appreciate you. <laughs> Is it Pokemon Trading Card Game for the Game Boy? I'm not saying. Um, thank you for stopping in. Thank you for watching if you're on YouTube. And I will see you all next time. Peace out, kids.